Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you another top 12 recommendation video. These are quickly becoming my favorite videos to film and I'm just going to give you my top 12 book recommendations in a specific like subcategory or subgenre of thriller or horror books. So if you know me and you know my horror reading taste, you probably know that one of my favorite personal favorite subgenres is the slasher. It's what got me addicted to loving horror as a child. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you my top 12 slasher books. And this is everything from extreme to YA. There's no distinction. It's just the top 12 best slashers that I've read. So before we get into the video, I do want to thank today's sponsor, which is Dossier. I have spoken about Dossier so many times on this channel, but if you don't know about Dossier, they are a wonderful, affordable perfume brand, and they recreate luxury scents at a amazing and unbeatable price. I know so many of y'all have reached out after trying Dossier and you're obsessed with it. I am too. Let's go ahead and open one up that they sent for me. So here we have, okay, this is gonna be a challenge. Foie gras? Pink pepper? Is that is that foie gras? I don't know. Y'all can see it. That's the name. <laughs> and this is designed to smell exactly like Gucci Guilty. Let's go ahead and give it a sniff. This is my best friend's all-time favorite perfume, so she will be very happy if this ends up smelling exactly like it. And it does. That is incredible. Oh my god, that smells so good, just like Gucci Guilty, and for a fraction of the price. It is honestly such a jump scare to go into Sephora and look at the prices of a bottle of perfume. It's crazy. But Dossier ranges from $29 to $49, super, super affordable for the same scent and quality of fragrance. I always get so many compliments when I wear a dossier because it just lasts for so long and it smells so high quality. I've never had issues with it like breaking out my skin and I have really sensitive skin as well. It lasts all day and they're just all around an amazing brand. So if you are looking for an affordable perfume or you've had your eye on one at Sephora but you just don't wanna pay that crazy amount, you definitely don't need to. Just go ahead and check out Dossier down below. Use my code for some money off. I will have it right here on the screen and down below. And yeah, smell like a freaking goddess. Thank you so much to Dossier for sponsoring yet another video of mine. And now let's go ahead and get into the book recommendations. So these little slashes are gonna be in no particular order. They're not really ranked but I do have some that I enjoyed more than others, so I will mention that when I get to them, but they're all just kind of in a stack over here. The first one that I see is The Cotton Candy Massacre by Christopher Robertson, and I freaking love this book. This was such a fun time. If you like a carnival setting, which I definitely want to make a top 12 recommendation video on carnival or like amusement park setting for horror. If you like that kind of a setting, you're gonna love this. The atmosphere was perfect. There's popcorn, there's cotton candy, there's rides, there's people getting killed in creative ways because of all of the different like fun fair things there are. And there are killer clowns, as you can see by this gorgeous art on the cover. Basically what happens is there was a massacre years and years ago at this amusement park. So it was like abandoned, immediately the marketing department shut it down. They were like, listen, <laughs> we can't stay open, this is bad for our image, for the PR of it all. And then years later, somebody buys it and reboots it. They open back up, but the souls of the lives that were lost in the massacre are still hanging around. And a few unsuspecting attendees of this carnival end up being possessed or slashed, or maybe they're the final girl. I don't know. You gotta read each perspective to find out. I loved the quirky variation of characters that we were following, and I loved the lore behind the slashing. 
And of course, the actual gore was wonderful. I've read a lot of extreme horror, really extreme violence, and this is some of the most well done gore I've ever read. I think it's... <laughs> I was gonna use the word tasteful. I don't know if that's the best word, but if gore can be tasteful, this is. Like it goes to that level where you're like, oh, okay, I'm shocked. I did not expect it to go there, but it never crosses a boundary that feels like too much. If you are looking for something that brings the gore, um, I would say, I, I know a lot of people say that this is extreme horror. I don't know that it is, but it is extreme gore, but not offensive. So. This is, for me, a pretty close to perfect book. I gave it five stars. It was one of my faves of last year. Go read it. Another one that is pretty extreme, just to get that out of the way, is The Groomer by John Athan. I also think John Athan writes a gore really, really well. And this book is not just a slasher. Obviously, you can tell by the title. It has that extra element of, like, children being kidnapped and groomed and all of that so that's the main plot but you're really just following these horrible kidnapping groomer pedophile ring people take child after child after child and dispose of them you know get what they need from them and then move on and simultaneously we're following the parents of one of the kids that was taken and we're trying to root for them as they try to get their child back. But along the way, it really did feel like a slasher in the structure of the plot. It was like very methodical, like, okay, now we're gonna look at this kid and then their demise happens and then we're gonna do this kid and then their demise happens and then kind of sprinkled throughout, there's the parents searching for the kid and they start getting into some slashing themselves as they get into the dark underbelly of this pedophile ring. Of course, the police aren't listening to them. It's very fast paced, high stakes, high gore. It's a great, great time. It's a great time. I mean, you know what I mean. Now, if you're looking for something not so extreme, I would recommend A Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. I absolutely freaking adore this book. It's YA, so it is a little kitschy. It has that like half-baked YA commentary in there. It has like the little romance subplot vibe, but that doesn't really distract from the main point of the book, which is this is an intense slasher, especially for YA, and it is so much fun. The kills are so creative. I'm obsessed. It's basically about this little small town, little small-minded small town, and we're following a girl who moved there with her dad, and she's like just trying to fit in, and she's in this group of like quirky teens and then all of a sudden these teens go to this little like party in the cornfield like how country people do it what is there to do in a small town nothing but sit in a cornfield and get blasted so that's what these teenagers are about to do and then out of the corn emerges a bunch of clowns who literally just want to kill them that's the plot and the majority of the book is the slashing. It is the kids actually getting hunted down and killed, which I really appreciated because I hate when a book brands itself as a slasher only to have the slashing be done in the last 10%. This book is paced really well. The kills are very creative. There's a lot of different like weaponry and different descriptions of gore. I think it's really great. Uh, just know that it's YA. Going in, prepare yourself for that kind of a voice while you're reading. Another one that I don't believe is YA, but it's kind of branded that way is Tastes Like Candy by Ivy Tholen. I think this one is so fun as well. If you think that the Cotton Candy Massacre might be a little too intense for you, I would pick up this one because it has that same like abandoned carnival setting. Basically, these senior girls in high school are doing their big like senior, I don't know what they call it, like senior, it's not senior skip day, but they basically do this thing. The girls of the senior class of this high school where they for one day do this scavenger hunt like the senior scavenger hunt and it's at this abandoned amusement park that they break into and so they do that and they're going through the amusement park doing their scavenger hunt and there's a masked killer in there picking them off one by one by one we're trying to figure out who it is who's killing them and why and of course it has that wonderful carnival setting and there's all those creative slaps it's not just like e -e -e, like knife coming at you it's like Becky is getting caught by her hair in the cotton candy machine and she's about to get scalped <laughs> it's definitely 
lighter and not as gory and intense as the other recommendations that I've had on this list. So if you're looking for something more fun and light, this is the one for you. One of the contemporary kings of slashing, in my opinion, is Stephen Graham Jones. So I do have a couple from him on this list. The first one is The Only Good Indians. I remember when I read this for the first time, I was just shook. I was not expecting it to be what it was, but what it is, is so good. I think you kind of need to go in with a vague description. I think if you know exactly what to expect, it takes that like fun surprise element out of it. And I really enjoyed that. So I'm going to give you enough to know that you need to read it without giving away the whole plot. But basically we are following four American Indian is what it says on the back, but like, you know, like Native American, American Indian, I'm trying to remember the name of their like actual tribe. Yeah. So these four Blackfoot guys, they were hunting, not in season, and they killed an elk. And the guilt of killing this elk is following them. And it's lurking around every corner and these guys start being picked off one by one by one we don't know if this is nature coming after them we don't know if this is guilt of one person taking it out on the rest of them we are just trying to figure out what is happening but there is so much in here besides just the slashing at its core it is a slasher but the creature horror the cultural elements everything. It's just so, so interesting and captivating. The writing style in this book I also really enjoyed. I think sometimes, for me at least, Stephen Graham Jones' writing style can be a little heady, a little dense, a little hard for me to wrap my mind around, but this one is a very approachable. Next, let's talk about, should we just like talk about my favorite one? I think, no, I know. No, maybe, ah, I don't know, okay. Definitely one of my top three on this list is Night of the Prowler by John Athan. I cannot praise this book enough. This is my perfect slasher. It is set in the 90s and we're following this moody, grungy teenager who works at like basically a 7-Eleven and she's working the night shift on her own when she hears on her radio behind the blare of Nirvana on her little headphones that a crazy killer has escaped from an asylum down the road. So she is trying to survive the night alone in this abandoned gas station while a killer is going on a rampage. We're following her and the tension is building in those chapters. And then in alternating chapters, we're following the masked killer as he goes around town slashing people and killing people in increasingly more and more brutal gory ways until he works his way up to meeting our final girl will she survive will she be the final girl or will he get the better of her it is just so fun it's like one of those classic slasher movies that i would put on when i was depressed in eighth grade and just like lose myself in it it's it's everything that i could ever want and i literally i can't talk about it anymore like any better than i am right now please go read it if you are a slasher lover and you can handle extreme gore and you kind of have a sense of humor about your horror i think that's also something that really appeals to me about this book is that it's not just like Oh my god intense like it's kind of self-aware it knows what it is it's funny and there's one scene in here that i think is so iconic i will never get it out of my brain if this sounds interesting to you at all please read this book i'll just go ahead and pop in the other stephen graham jones book on this list and that is night of the mannequins this is a teeny teeny tiny novella but i enjoyed my reading experience of this so much and this is a slasher that's a little bit more creative it's not so straightforward so it all starts with this group of middle schoolers and they are <laughs> pranking each other by messing around with this mannequin like they treat this mannequin like it's kind of a person so a couple of the people in their friends group work at the local movie theater so to prank them they decide like oh let's bring the mannequin to the movie theater set him up in the seat buy him a ticket it'll be so funny well they do that little harmless prank and then when they get up and leave the theater guess who walks out on his own two feet the freaking mannequin and a slasher ensues from there it is so 
so fast paced, so crazy. It's just kill after kill after kill. And the twist in here, I know it's controversial. I know a lot of people didn't like it. I loved it. The ending in here, I know it's controversial. I know a lot of people didn't like it. It just really, really worked for me. And I loved the twist of it all. So this is a fave for me. Going back to my favorite carnival setting, let's talk about Cirque Berserk by Jessica Guess. I believe that's the author's name. I don't have the book in front of me because I read it on Kindle Unlimited. But yeah, it's available on there if you do want to read it. This is another slasher set in a time before. This is set in present day and kind of the 80s simultaneously. And we are following a group of high school kids who stop at yet again an abandoned amusement park where a tragedy and this big massacre happened years and years and years ago. We are also following in alternating chapters, the massacre that happened in the 80s and seeing these like 80s kids get slashed and like the nostalgia of it all, but then also how that connects to the present day and what's about to happen to these kids who pull into this abandoned amusement park on their, I believe this is a senior trip as well. I loved the speculative elements in this book. I love the connections. I love the time jumps. This is just more creative than your standard straightforward slasher. And I love the characters in this book. There's one girl from the 80s timeline in particular that she's a queen. I am literally obsessed with her. And if I wrote this book, I would literally be so proud of myself. <laughs> I know that's like a weird thing to say in a book review, but like, this is just, to me, so cool. Like, I feel like this author is the coolest person ever. She's very cool. I want to be her. Next up, let's talk about the Slaughter series. So here I have Halloween Slaughter. This is actually the sequel to Camp Slaughter. Both books are by the lovely Sergio Gomez. And of course, there will be a final book in the trilogy coming out at some point in the next year or so. And I believe that one is called The Final Slaughter. So perfect little trilogy there. And these books are just so fun. I really liked the sequel, but I especially loved Camp Slaughter, the original. This one is so fast paced. It reads like an action packed horror movie. And we are following this masked cannibal killer who lives in this abandoned cabin. It's like this abandoned campground. And of course there are like unsuspecting people who are like, oh my God, this Airbnb is like so nature, let's go stay. And then they end up getting ee, 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 by the cannibal in the woods. And this villain character, for some reason, I just feel for him. I just love him. He has some trauma. We really go into his backstory and his culture and his upbringing, like everything about this villain. Like he is right up there with like Freddy and Jason to me. Like he is a fully realized villain. That is really the strong point of these slaughter books. But of course the um, slashing and the plot and the pacing and all of it is great as well. This is probably my number one summer horror recommendation and my number one recommendation when people ask me what to read to get out of a slump, especially if you're a slasher fan. This is just going to revive your reading immediately. I also put an unconventional series on this list. So I don't know how people are going to respond to this, but I believe that this is some of the best slasher content book movie otherwise that I've ever consumed. And that is the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey. And this is all about a girl who went through a tragic incident in um, her, not really childhood, but like back in her hometown. And now she is on a revenge mission to kill off every single person who had a hand in this tragedy that happened to her and her family. So she is this badass bitch, female serial killer who is running through, slashing all these men in really descriptive, violent ways, which I appreciate. But the reason why this might be controversial to put on this list is that it's branded as a dark romance and there are many romance elements to the plot. There's smut. If you don't like smut, don't read this book because our main character is in a relationship with the FBI agent assigned to her case, unbeknownst to him, obviously. So that adds a kind of extra element to the story. But I love this book 
all five of them. They're like little teeny tiny hundred page novellas that make up this big um, total series, total story. I love every single one of them. They're so camp. They're so fun. I have never had a better time reading a series other than like maybe The Girl in 6E, but honestly, those kind of go hand in hand. If you like one, you will like the other. Next, let's talk about Brother as we are rounding out the list here. Last couple recommendations. Y'all had to know that this was going to be on this list. This is my favorite horror book of all time. That is the title that I've given this book lovingly and proudly because I love Brother so much. Now, this really isn't going to work for you if you're a slasher lover because you like the plot focus. This is a character driven slasher, which I think is very unique. And it's why I think the book is such a strong piece of horror literature. I'm also a primarily character driven reader. So it just really worked for me. But we are following a young boy who is kidnapped by this group of cannibal killers think like Texas Chainsaw Massacre when he's a child and so he grows up in this family thinking that this is normal and that he's just going to grow up to be a cannibal serial killer and that's his destiny but then as he's older he starts kind of questioning things and we are following him on that journey where he's like participating in these slashings with his whole family and we're like looking into the fucked up family dynamics and this guy's history and he's just trying to become like a normal adult man and questioning every piece of his path that has been laid out before him. I just love this book so much. It's not only great gore, great slashing, great killing, but it's the whole character backstory. It's emotional. It's visceral. You can feel it. You can feel what it's like to be in his shoes, to be in that setting, to be a part of this insane family dynamic. It's so good. And the last book to round out my top 12 slasher recommendations is going to be Pearl by Josh Mallerman. And this one is so crazy. Again, this one's camp as fuck. Like, this is not a straightforward slasher because the person, well, <laughs> the entity doing the slashing in this book is a pig who can control people's minds. You heard me right. So we're following a pig who lives on this farm and she is the ruler of her little farm, okay? Pearl slays. Pearl is out here living, eating her slop, rolling in the mud and having the best time doing it. And she also has telekinesis. So she can communicate with people's brains and kind of force them to do her bidding. So she's an evil little pig and she, every human she comes into contact with, she's just like, kill them. Either kill yourself or kill someone else. And she like manipulates people with her little pig brain to <laughs> kill themselves or kill someone else. It's crazy. And of course, no one like around like the farmer, the policeman in the town, like none of them are suspecting Pearl. So they're like, what's going on here? Why are all these people dying on this farm? This is suspicious. <laughs> It's so funny. It's that campy, self-aware horror that I just love so much. It's ridiculous. It's well-written. It's fast-paced. It's so fun. And at the end of the day, that is my favorite thing about a slasher is they are just freaking fun. They always feel nostalgic and quick and like easy reads and... I just love so many of these books. So I hope that you enjoyed getting my top 12 slasher recommendations. I hope you're going to pick up a couple from this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Dossier down below. Get some money off some affordable but luxury perfume. Like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week. I will see you guys in my next video.